Welcome everybody uh, to our June um, ISAM event. Um, I'm Peter Webley. I'm one of the program managers here at um, Alaska Center ICE, the Alaska Center for Innovation, Innovation, Commercialization and Entrepreneurship. And we're going to be focusing today on three startup accelerators here in the state of Alaska. Um, for those uh, attending what the ICE time event is about, it's a, a, a place to network um, with others across the state, uh, learn about programs out there and to socialize. And we have different types of events. And today obviously is a learning event with some networking for you to be able to connect with and, and ask some questions of, of the uh, panelists after they give a presentation. So um, we have this as a webinar. So for the attendees, uh, you are able to um, use the chat, but also um, the Q&A is open for you to ask questions either um, anonymously or um, using your name. Um, and then the, the panelists will look to answer those and I'll bring those and myself and, and Solomon Hillbloom who's helping me today will bring those questions forwards. On the, on the chat, uh, please um, use that to provide us some information about yourself, uh, your name, organizations, any links or information that you'd like to share. It's always interesting to see where everybody's coming from, which programs they represent and uh, ways to connect with you after the, after the ICEM event. So that's how we'll use the chat and, and then the question and answers uh, you can use for um, direct questions for the panelists, which we'll bring up after the three presentations. A um, couple of things to highlight from the Center ICE uh, program that's happening at the moment. Um, this ICEM event is also running in parallel with our Students to Startups program. This is a summer-based intensive experiential learning program uh, where we have students paired with startup companies and actually a few of the startup companies are in, are in the programs uh, that you'll be hearing about from today and also have graduated out of uh, previous versions of the um, existing uh, programs. Some of the 907 Financial has gone through Upstart Alpha um, and then um, Carter Solutions is working with Linda and the G Beta and then uh, Aquago, as an example here, is part of the Launch Alaska uh, tech development track. So that you can see this collaboration, this connection between all the different entrepreneur programs across the state of Alaska. Also, um, at the moment, we, we have a, a innovation core training program at CenterICE um, that is a National Science Foundation funded uh, program to accelerate academic research projects um, and to go through the sort of a value proposition and um, customer discovery interview process. So if you're in an academic environment and, and um, have a technology or product or a service that you're looking for support to help um, evaluate um, how to um, move this from the lab to the market, then please do reach out to us um, and you'll be hearing more from the three presenters today on their types of programs that they have and, and would be ways to connect with them. So Today is the ISAM event, uh, Startup Accelerators. Um, we have three uh, presenters from Launch Alaska, from G Beta, and from the Upstart Alpha Startup Accelerator. So I'm just gonna briefly ask the three to introduce themselves, um, and then we'll go into the first presenter. So if Francis, Gretchen, and Linda could just briefly say hi, and, and uh, then we'll move on to the first presenter, so. Sure, thanks, Peter. I'm Francis Ball, and I'm the COO with Launch Alaska. Hey everyone, Linda Jaynes, and I'm a director of GBeta Anchorage. Hi all, I'm Gretchen Fowski. I'm the associate director of the University of Alaska Center for Economic Development, which manages the Upstart Alpha Startup Accelerator. Wonderful, great. Thank you all for the introductions. Um, so now we'll move on to hear from Francis and the Launch Alaska program. So I will uh, be controlling the slides. I'll mute myself and my video, and therefore, Francis, you'll be um, all the participants will be able to see you. So over to you, Francis, and just let me know when you want to move along the next slide. Great, thank you, Peter. So we only have 15 minutes today, so I will jump into it and give you an overview of Launch Alaska, who we are, what we do, and then um, because of the format today, I'll talk a little bit about what differentiates us, so how we fit into the broader accelerator ecosystem in Alaska. Next slide. So who are we and what do we do? Um, this blurb on the, on the slide is a long jargony explanation, but in summary, we're a nonprofit that focuses on accelerating project deployment for climate tech projects in Alaska. And we do this mostly through our accelerator program, the tech deployment track, as well as through some other innovation projects um, outside that traditional accelerator model. 
And we started in 2016 as a small local accelerator to get Alaskan companies off the ground. And then we transitioned to a bit late, later stage companies um, and focused in on energy in particular. And then over the years, we've expanded that to climate tech more broadly. So food, water, energy, and transportation. And demonstrating tangible results, kind of the last part of what you see on the slide there is really important to us because we're just starting to measure the impact of some of these projects um, and impact reporting specifically using ESG or environmental, social and governance metrics is a big part of what we're doing. Next slide. So this is the team that makes all that happen. Um, I won't go through each person today, but in my role as COO, I manage all of our operations, our impact assessment, our tech areas, and then our investment for our portfolio companies. And I started with Launch Alaska back in early 2018. So I've been with the team for about three and a half years now. Next slide. So at Launch Alaska, our mission is to accelerate the resource revolution by deploying game-changing technologies. Next slide. And so how do we determine that mission? How do we come to that? Um, that statement. So these challenges might be familiar to those of you from Alaska, but climate change is happening here on a faster scale than almost anywhere else on the planet. We have the second highest cost of energy in the US. And so this shows that we need new technologies that reduce the cost of energy. And we don't have a diversified economy. So that's made it difficult to realize some of these projects. Um, but that also shows that Alaska has untapped potential to really lead the resource revolution. Next slide. And this is really because we have, uh, we believe we have really huge opportunity in the state. And so there's an opportunity for Alaska to be a deployment ground for energy, transportation, food and water solutions. And then we also have declining cost curves on renewables and storage. So they're cheaper than they ever have been. And there's this big global shift to microsystems and electrifying everything. So that means that right now is an ideal time to transition Alaska um, as well. Next slide. So through deploying projects, we have this big audacious goal of deploying 1 billion in projects in the state of Alaska by 2030. And we're in the early millions so far, and we're expecting to kind of start slow and then gain exponential traction in the later years. And this is kind of any project that we're involved with and um, that we help deploy. Okay, next slide. So moving on to our main program, our accelerator program is called the Tech Deployment Track. And I wanted to show you this short video just to give you a sense of what it looks like and who's involved. So you can go ahead and play that, Peter. It was a crazy 24 hours. We brought together a couple dozen startups from the lower 48, from Alaska, from all over the world, and about 30 panelists. So those were power players and decision makers from all over Alaska, including investors from outside, and, um, and brought them together for one like very compressed, very intensive work session. So far it has been really great, regardless of what happens. I've made contacts that will help me get to the next step. We were on our last team presenting to the entire panel. In the middle of this team's presentation, one of our panel members throws his hands up in the air and starts talking to the person next to him. And so when we asked him what was going on, he said, this is exactly what I was looking for. That's really why we created the program the way we did, to try to get as many exciting, promising companies in front of as many decision makers and asset owners as we could. We chose our panelists because they're a group of folks who have a bead on opportunities, challenges, projects in Alaska that might be really valuable to our startups. So that includes folks like utilities, municipalities, people that work at the native corporations, really this group of asset owners, folks that have you know, decision authority over um, projects and over opportunities. It has taken what can sometimes be a difficult or a long process to do due diligence uh, for an investment and has created a condensed version. We're trying to get solutions to the most pressing problems of our day into the field. And the way we think that we can do that is by connecting people with solutions to the people with challenges.
Thanks, Peter. Peter. So that gave you a sense of just kind of what our program looks like and some of our panelists. Gretchen has actually been a panelist for us in the past. Um, so this slide is now showing the flow of our program. So we hold four sessions over eight months. Um, the first one in mid-September each year, and then the last session is in May. And we use this longer model and just one program per year, um, because as we've moved towards project deployment and a lot of hardware projects, we found that it takes a long time to get projects off the ground. And so we wanted to give our teams a little bit more time to suss out these projects. So we start with a larger group of companies in session one. So it's a little bit untraditional that we start with a bigger group and we narrow that group down throughout the program. And then a smaller group of companies joins our portfolio in the end. Um, so in session one, I put all of, our, all of our teams together in a room with our panelists and they generate a bunch of leads. So a bunch of um, you know, potential projects um, that could happen in Alaska. Um, and as the video mentioned, our panelists are potential customers, asset owners, subject matter experts in Alaska. So they help generate that big list of leads for the companies. And then over the course of the program, the goal is to secure a project commitment in Alaska. So if a team finds that Alaska isn't a great fit, then they will self-select out of the program. And so we end up with five or 10 or so by the end um, who join our portfolio. And this just means, so if they join our portfolio, it means that we're committed to working with them to get those projects over the finish line and then working with them on an ongoing basis um, with project development in Alaska. Uh, next slide. So this is a busy slide, um, but why would a company choose to come to Alaska? Why would they be interested in applying to our program? This is a question we get a lot. Um, and so basically this is showing Alaska's assets and opportunities in each of our tech areas. And then on the bottom, what types of technologies we would recruit for our program as a result. And typically we hand this out as a eight and a half by 11 one pager. Um, so if you want to read through in more detail, I'm happy to share that afterwards. Um, but just a couple examples I wanted to call out from this. Um, so in food, for example, we lead the nation in new farmers, particularly young female farmers. And the local um, food boom here has really been enabled by a longer growing season. Um, so because of climate change, we now have a month longer growing season than we did just 30 years ago, which is kind of wild. Um, in transportation, one to call out is that we don't have beyond visual line of sight laws um, for drones. So that has made our program a good fit for a lot of drone companies interested in last mile transport solutions. And then in energy, the opportunities are, are probably the most clear. We have more microgrids than almost anywhere else in the world. So we're, we're a great fit for any microgrid tech. Um, okay, I'll end there on that one. I could go on and on on, on this topic. I love talking through these assets. Um, Okay, next slide. So I wanted to spend some time talking about how we fit into the landscape of other accelerators in the state and what would make Launch Alaska the right fit for your company. So we're a deployment focused accelerator. So focused on getting projects over the finish line in Alaska. Um, we focus on hardware companies, but we definitely have software companies as well. Um, and then we have a climate tech focus. So food, water, energy, and transportation. We look for a bit later stage companies. So to us, that means companies that have a product or service that's ready to, um, or ready for deployment within the next 12 to 18 months, or at least if they have a um, lab tested MVP. Also, we're looking for companies that have revenue or at least revenue ready and are seeking to secure early customers in Alaska. So that's kind of the stage we're looking for. Um, one other thing I want to mention, um, another reason we're interested in later stage companies, specifically for energy and uh, hardware tech, is because there's definitely a history of people coming from outside and going outside Alaska and going into rural communities and uh, you know promising tech and then bringing something in that doesn't perform or breaks and is never fixed. Um, and so we recognize that history and really want to be sure that this tech will work before bringing it into a rural community. Um, we also want that community to really see the value and pay for this new technology rather than just subsidizing a project and making it happen ourselves. Um, and one exception to that rule for later stage companies that's relevant for this audience is that we do make an exception for Alaska-based companies. So if there's, if there's an early stage climate tech company in Alaska um, that we hear of or that went through G-Beta or Upstart Alpha, 
then we'll typically admit them even if they're early stage. Um, we really just want to encourage more Alaska-based companies um, and help, help those teams. So we're willing to accept earlier stage companies from Alaska. Um, next on this list, we admit companies from, oh yeah, you can stay there for a second. Um, we do admit companies from all over the world. Um, so that's kind of unique as well. Um, we have about 25% of our portfolio based in Alaska. Um, and then the majority are from outside Alaska and we even have about 10% international. So that kind of sets us apart as well. Um, they have to have a reason to come to Alaska to deploy their tech here, but they can come from anywhere. Um, we also don't do a direct investment. So we used to do a $75,000 investment from a small fund we were managing. And we realized that as we targeted later stage companies, they weren't as interested in this investment and we're more focused on securing customers and revenue. And um, so instead we choose to, when, when teams are raising around, we'll connect them with our partner VC funds rather than investing directly. Okay, next slide. So we have 31 companies in our portfolio and they're spread across our four verticals. Next slide. So food is definitely our smallest. We only have one company um, that's made it through our program in food. And this was a company from our, um, actually our first cohort. Next slide. In water, we have a couple more. Um, so giving you an example of the type of technology, we have a coastal erosion company. We have a snow melt forecasting company. Um, a couple of wastewater treatment companies. Next slide. And in transportation, we have companies um, such as Last Mile Transit, um, Heavy Lift Drones, Cargo Coordination. Next slide. And then energy is by far our biggest vertical. We focused on this one earlier than the others. And so we've built out more companies in this vertical. Um, we have everything from energy storage um, to microgrid software, uh, natural gas compression, uh, things like that. And then we also have a couple of companies that don't fit into our verticals and aren't focused on uh, mitigating climate change. Um, I didn't list those here, but if you are interested in what those are, you can check out our website. And a lot of those are kind of from our earlier days when we weren't yet focused on that. Uh, next slide. So our tech deployment track culminates in projects. And so far we've had several projects get installed. Um, about 25% of our companies are earning Alaska-based revenue. And so I wanted to just quickly go through a couple examples um, of projects that actually came out of just this last cohort. So the ones that joined our portfolio in May. Um, so this one is a, a combination of two companies, Ajito that does microgrid controls and Blue Planet Energy. And they're doing a solar plus storage PPA in Shugnak and Kobuk. Next slide. Um, these are a handful of other ones. So Dynamics is climate impact software. They're working with the municipality of Anchorage. Biomass Controls is doing wastewater treatment at Red Dog Mine with Tech. And Sherlock is doing coastal erosion, working um, on a project in Homer with the Homer Spit. Next slide. I just wanted to um, highlight some of our partners, particularly our main funder who is the Office of Naval Research, and they've been with us since the beginning, um, really funding most of our work. Next slide. So just to wrap us up, I wanted to mention a couple of the ways we're already connected to G Beta, Upstart Alpha, and Center Ice to just share some of the great examples of how we all work together in this bigger entrepreneurial ecosystem in Alaska. So at Launch Alaska, we can accept companies from G-Beta and Upstart Alpha into Launch Alaska. And already from G-Beta's first cohort, we've accepted a company into Launch Alaska for our upcoming program. So that's exciting. And then um, the Upstart companies are typically a bit early. So it's nice to have this funnel where, you know, potentially companies could go from Upstart Alpha to G-Beta and then to Launch Alaska. Um, and other ways that we mentor companies in each program. So. Um, Pam from my team mentored the companies in G-Beta this year, and then I led a session with Upstart Alpha about impact reporting. Um, so that was a great way to connect as well. Um, we're also looking forward to participating in investor days for G-Beta. And then with the Students to Startups program, um, I saw that some of you are working with companies in our portfolio, um, particularly Gramora and Aquaga. So that was great to see, and it's just another great connection about how we work together. Um, 
so yeah, I'm really excited to be the, in this event with both G -beta, G beta and Upstart Alpha and just really showing you all that we do have a robust accelerator ecosystem here in Alaska. Um, and you can go to the next slide. If anyone has any questions, you can email me or save them for after the other two presentations. And with that, I will pass it off to Linda. Thank you. Hey everybody. I can just go ahead and kick it off. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'll get started. Ahead. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Really appreciate it. My name is Linda James again. I'm the director for G Beta Anchorage, which is a local accelerator. But before I sort of dive into that, let me introduce you guys to the company that I work for, and that will actually help you understand G Beta a little bit better. Next slide, please. So you see our mission statement here, but really like the best way to think of Generator, which is the company that I work for, um, is uh, venture capital and community together, like the union of venture capital and community. So as we go through this presentation, um, just think of those two things, venture capital and community. Next slide. And so when you look at really what does Generator do, you see that really Generator is a platform, right? And we do everything from pre-accelerators to accelerators to corporate venture capital, to working with uh, musicians and artists, to training people on, on job skills and actually helping them find a job in the local community. And so through looking at all of this, what we see is that Generator is really an ecosystem. And our goal is to connect a variety of stakeholders like yourselves, startup founders, um, artists, investors, universities, and corporations. And I kind of, for the purposes of this presentation, I want to key in on a couple of things in here, sort of like segment things into two. So the first thing is we're going to talk about is our equity-based programs that we have. And the second thing is going to be our non-equity-based programs. Okay, so keep that in mind. Uh, next slide. Okay, so one of the things that's really cool with Generator is we are, you know, spread out all over the United States. We are a Midwest Wisconsin based company, but we do have 45 plus um, locations and programs, uh, one in Canada, and actually we just opened one in Luxembourg as well. Um, the other thing that makes us unique is that most of these programs, these dots that you see here, are specifically catered for, for that uh, community, for that location, right? So whether that means that we're working people on their job skills and like helping them find a job and partnering with companies in local communities, or we're working with startups and helping them get funded. Um, altogether, what this, this says is like we're trying to strengthen the economy, the local economy. Next slide. And so on our equity-based programs, what we do is we raise a venture capital fund and we invest into early stage startups through our equity-based accelerator programs. And um, you saw the previous slide, how widespread we are. Um, the, that, that and plus the fact that we get, you know, a thousand plus applicant for any of our um, equity-based accelerators, this is what allows us to be the most active investor in the Midwest. Next slide. We also syndicate with more other, uh, with other investors more than anybody else in the Midwest as well. And um, I was kind of, you know, shocked, like pleasantly surprised that even here in Alaska talking to people, that they know of Generator and they've syndicated with Generator before. And syndicate just means that, you know, instead of individual investors investing into one startup and there's like different line items on the cap table, everybody pulls their money together and there's only one line item on the cap table, which is just a lot easier to manage for everybody involved. Next slide. So just another example of uh, different VCs and angels that we syndicate with. Next slide. So to give you guys an idea of how we've done, um, since our inception, which was uh, Generator was founded in 2012, we have invested into 100 plus startups. These startups have uh, raised a follow-on uh, of 500 million plus, and we've had eight exits so far. So that's pretty good. Uh, we're also pretty passionate about, you know, um, including diversity in, into our startups. And so on the bottom right, you see we're tracking those metrics as well. And we actually have 
an accelerator that's specifically for minority founders. Next slide. And so that was all equity-based stuff. Now transitioning to non-equity-based and uh, enter G-beta. Next slide. So what is G-beta? So I, I want you guys to focus on a couple of things here. First, we invest into early stage companies. Second, these companies have local roots, which means that we will not take a company that's really um, outside of the community of um, Alaska. Next is that this program is seven weeks long and we really only accept five teams because what we run is a concierge based accelerator, which means that we meet with teams one on one twice a week for seven weeks in a row. Um, and lastly, this program does not cost you any equity and there are no fees to apply. But just because it's free, I just want to say that it does not mean that it's a walk in the park. Next slide. So the goal of G Beta can really be summed up in us um, working with startups so they can get funded, right? G Beta equals startups getting funded. Specifically, our metrics is that one third of the graduates who participate in G Beta either one, get into an equity based accelerator, or two, raise a seed round of at least $50,000 up to a year after they graduate from the program. Next slide. So let's see how G Beta has done. Uh, this is as of March of this year. We, uh, we've had 466 companies that have gone through G Beta. Um, and I forgot to mention, there's 27 different G Betas now in the United States. And 56% uh, have hit the metric that I've talked about. So, you know, our internal goal is, is that a third hit the metric. We have 56% that are actually doing it. So we're, we're doing well. And combined, these companies have raised 163 million of follow-on funding. Next slide. And as of uh, May of this year, we, we kicked off our very first G Beta Anchorage. And our, we're actually just finishing up with our cohort right now. So these are the companies that are in our cohort. And just to give you kind of an overview of what happens during the seven weeks, we, again, keep in mind, everything is based on getting these companies funded, right? This is what we work on. We, together, we write an executive summary for these companies. What does that mean? Um, that entails talking about, you know, knowing how to have uh, to write an overview for your company, knowing, knowing how to talk about your product, um, your revenue model, your market size. Like how do you calculate that? Talk about your competition, um, financing and milestones. We'll look at comparatives. You know, we, we look at your comparatives on PitchBook and we give you all that data. And for every one of these topics, you guys will sit on, on a kind of a lunch and learn, which is a pres uh, educational presentation that gives you in-depth information on every one of these. So not only are you gonna be able to craft an executive summaries that investors love, you will understand this in like a broader context of investing in startups. Um, we're, you're also gonna get trained on uh, presentations on how to get into an equity-based accelerator. On this last uh, cohort, we had Nate Schmidt from Techstars give us all the scoops on how to do that. Um, you're also going to meet with a startup attorney and kind of go through a legal one-on-one presentation, Q&A, all that good stuff. During the first five weeks, we have all of our startups meet with 25 mentors, so five mentors per week and like a speed dating type scenario. You know, just like uh, Launch Alaska, we want you guys to get introduced to as many helpful people in the community um, as possible. And this is not just people here in Alaska. We invite people from all over the place, um, including some of our alumni, um, VCs, startup attorneys. We've had people from different countries on this, on this last um, cohort. So it's super fun. We're also gonna work through your pitch deck. We're gonna run you through a pitch workshop. You're gonna learn how to pitch. We're gonna put a pitch together. You're gonna practice um, a lot um, and we're gonna make sure that not only that you know how to pitch, you know how to pitch your company succinctly and in a way that you know gives investors a lot of desire and builds a lot of fear of missing out. Um, and so all of this seven weeks culminates with what we call an investor swarm. We invite a bunch of investors for you guys to meet 
and all you're doing is pitching the whole week. We just finished our investor swarm. We actually did a, about a week and a half of that. And we had 18 investors, I think, join us from here locally um, and all over the country. And at one point, one of the days, we had five pitches that everybody was just pitching to five different investors back to back to back. And it was super fun. Um, and it gives you an ability to really get a good sample size of the investors and start seeing, okay, what's the feedback that investors are giving me? And so you can start working on those things, super valuable. And finally, the last thing that happen, happens in the program is a pitch night, um, which is sort of the public unveiling, the celebration, demo day, you know, whatever you wanna call it. We do a pitch night. Uh, this time it's happening on July 22nd. Uh, feel free to Google GBeta Anchorage and sign up for pitch night so you can see all these companies present. And then afterwards we'll go and have a bonding celebration experience. Um, but the thing is like, that's not even all, right? When all this said and done, you become a G-Beta alumni. G-Beta alumni means that you're gonna get all the invitations to pitch competitions, um, meeting VCs, all kinds of conferences, all kinds of in-person events. And if you ever wanted, say you're, you know, you're in a specific sector and you're like, okay, I wanna meet this investor, we will help you get a warm introduction. As you saw, we have a pretty wide network of investors that we work with. And so we will make sure that we will secure that introduction for you to meet with that investor. And probably the really the coolest thing and the most beautiful thing is that, you know, in the state, in Alaska, we really have this, like, if you're an entrepreneur, there's a home for you in one of these accelerators, right? Between Upstart Alpha and G Beta and Launch Alaska, like, we'll find a home for you. So just, you know, we encourage you guys to, to come to us and talk to us. Um, I have office hours that you can, you can reach out to me um, with, you know, I've helped with Upstart Alpha before and like Francis is saying, they're um, helping with G-Beta. So we really try to make this a pipeline and make sure that the entrepreneur is put in like the right place that's gonna get them to succeed and then moved up from there. So I'll, I'll conclude with that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Linda. I forgot I should bring my video on as I'm going in, in between each uh, presenter. So that's that's great. And I'll see a few questions popping up. And uh, so we'll bring those in at the end. But next, we'll have Gretchen Bowski from uh, University of Alaska Anchorage Center for Economic Development uh, to present on their programming um, and their Upstart Alpha Accelerator as well. So I will move on to Gretchen, your first slide, and then I will uh, pass it on to you to present. Thanks so much, Peter. Um, and thanks, Linda and Francis, for um, doing such a good job of shining a light on our programming as well as yours. Um, I think it's already really clear how integrated we are and how closely we work together, which really just adds value and benefit to the people in our programs. Next slide. So I work for the Alaska Center for Economic Development. We're um, a program of the UAA Business Enterprise Institute. Um, although we're located at UAA, we serve all of Alaska. Um, as a, a center for economic development. Next slide. Um, our areas of focus are applied research, entrepreneurial ecosystem development, planning and technical assistance, and dissemination of information. And so today, obviously, I'm focusing on entrepreneurial ecosystem development, specifically Upstart Alpha. Next slide. So a little bit about entrepreneurship in Alaska before we dig into our programming. Um, we released the State of Entrepreneurship Report in 2018, and we did a real analysis of what entrepreneurship in Alaska looks like. Um, the numbers that we used were 2005 to 2014, which were the most up-to-date at that time. We're hoping to do another, um, another report looking at the change since you released this. But what we found was um, young firms meeting new firms, startups, create 89% of Alaska's net private employment growth. And so when you come to talking about jobs, the people creating new jobs, not just jobs becoming vacated and then filled, but new jobs that hadn't existed before are startups. That is one of the many reasons that startups is startups are so important to our economy. Next slide. Um, one interesting thing about Alaska comparing to other states is you can see we have a high, we were ranked third for rate of new entrepreneurs, second for startup growth, that's fantastic. Um, that said, in terms of startup scaling and high growth density, we're near the bottom of the rankings and not included on this, but of interest. Um, 
for a period of time, we were number one in the country for per capita rates of female entrepreneurs. We've dropped to number six on that list, but it's still pretty good. So shout out to Alaska women launching businesses. Next slide. Um, so when we were doing some programming around Upstart Alpha, what, what we did was kind of think about the problems and our intervention, what we were going to do to address the problem and then the outcome we wanted. And so there were a few things that we found. Um, obviously the scaling thing, which I mentioned previously. Um, there's a limited culture of entrepreneurship amongst University of Alaska students. Obviously Center ICE is doing um, heroic work to combat that as well as our programming at UAA. But there is a real decline of entrepreneurship amongst younger adults. And there continues to be an urban and rural gap between entrepreneurship and Alaska. So we um, thought about these three things. We looked at how we could address them and we launched the Upstart Alpha program which helps offer uh, value propositions and customer segments through customer discovery to people participating. We're trying to normalize a culture of entrepreneurship, helping students and other young people who aren't students recognize if um, recognize that entrepreneurship is a path that they could take. And we also have engaged, um, as many of us have during the pandemic, in more digital tools so that we can be virtual and reach a wider audience. Next slide. So everyone's mentioned the funnel. It's an example everybody loves to use. So here's kind of a funnel. We're at the wide end of the funnel. Um, we work with early stage entrepreneurs. In fact, even less than business development, we're focusing on entrepreneur development, helping people understand what the entrepreneurial journey is, how to grow as entrepreneurs, how to get tools that they can use going forward in whatever aspect that they end up working in. So um, you can see in this graphic, we're, we're looking at ideation, customer discovery, value propositions, prototyping, and like some real business basics. Um, I would say probably in the middle is G beta and then the demonstration projects that launch works at is near the end. Next slide. So we've come to the Upstart Alpha Startup Accelerator. Um, I neglected to include a picture of them for which they're probably grateful, but it's led by myself, Margo Fliss, who manages the strategic engagement at um, CED, and Catherine Jernstrom, who many of you know, she founded, co-founded The Boardroom. She's an investor um, and she is currently our entrepreneur in residence. So she works with us on delivering our entrepreneurship programming. Um, she offers mentoring, one-on-one -on -one coaching, and is a real um, asset to have on our team and more broadly in our entrepreneurial ecosystem. Next slide. So Upstart Alpha is a cohort-based program. We started out in person for our very first pilot. We recognized that we wanted to reach a broader group of people. And so we were already planning on going virtual and then really had to go virtual because of the pandemic. Um, I think in the future, we're really trying to learn some lessons. And so we'll be mostly virtual, but hopefully have opportunities for in-person meetups um, just because there is something that you can't quite replicate over Zoom. It is a competitive application. Um, for our last cohort, we had 60 people apply. We were only able to take 12. So I'll get to that later, but we're addressing that as well because we want to be able to serve everybody who's interested. We do give a priority to students. That doesn't mean we're student exclusive. It just means around 50% um, of the people that we accept are students. And that is to address that problem we identified, which is um, a lack of entrepreneurship in young people and students. We don't take any equity, we are free, and we do offer a $1,500 investment, um, investment, meaning it's a stipend that people can use however they want to invest in their company. That could be anything from um, digital marketing, building your website, or something like paying for childcare so that you're able to attend our programming. Um, next slide. So all of our programming is grounded in the lean startup approach. These are some books that we really rely on. Um, we are very much into build, test, learn and customer discovery, learning from our customers. And so um, I know that I'm, looks like I'm running a little bit of time behind time. So I would just say, if you're interested in digging in a little bit more, I would highly recommend all three of these books. Next slide. Here's what some of our content area looks like. You can see at the beginning, we're really focused on the individual, the person. And so that has to do with looking at um, what your strengths are as an entrepreneur, what your purpose is. We also talk about a lot about what success means. Success doesn't mean the same thing to everybody else. And that should be a guiding, a guiding principle as you um, pursue your business. For us, success means introducing people to startups and entrepreneurship. 
it could mean that someone realizes they don't want to be a founder, but they want to support startups as an ecosystem builder or work for one. It could also mean that someone recognizes this is not the world for them, but becomes a champion of startups in some other way. And it could mean that someone goes on to be a successful founder. As you see, we kind of move, move through um, starting out focusing on the person, and then we get into things like value proposition, sprints, et cetera. Next slide. Um, we, we also focus on things like how to build your team, branding, pitching, funding and investors. And we've been really grateful to both Launch Alaska and um, Linda before she joined GBeta and now that she has joined GBeta for their support of us in coming in and being subject matter experts and speaking to some of these topics for our cohorts. Next slide. Um, our final uh, celebration is not a pitch night or a competition. It is people sharing their, um, their idea, their startup. Uh, the focus of sort of our end celebration is connecting to the community. We want the people that we work with to develop really strong connections, to know where to go next, to know who to call when they need support or mentorship. And so, like I said, our final celebration really focuses on just building out our community. Next slide. Um, this was our last cohort. They were from all over Alaska, from Southeast all the way up to Fairbanks. Um, they were a great group to work with. They had a number of ideas sort of spanning um, digital app type things to um, really comfortable outdoor pants, um, to uh, scents, to a hot spring development project. There were all sorts of things and it was great. One of the things we're changing in the future is that, um, actually next slide, um, is that I think we were, gosh, we were so we were like 12 weeks long or something. It was too long. Um, we realized that not everybody needed that kind of programming for that long. And so we're sticking with a virtual format going forward. Like I said, we also um, realized that as we were going through, we had a little bit of attrition, people who weren't able to stick through it. So really thinking about the right length and the duration, what we've decided to do is offer more on and off ramps to our programming. So like I said, 60 people applied last time. What we'll do going forward is start really broad and be able to serve those people. And as we become more and more specific about what we're offering, there will be natural places for people to sort of to, to depart and work on their idea and maybe come back the next year or join in some other programming instead. We're also looking at how we can continue to support people before and after um, in new ways. That's where our customer discovery intensive comes in. It's something that we notice people need a lot more of. And so we've really been focusing and working there to get people ready for some of the accelerators that kick off in the fall. Next slide. Um, so our, here's more on our evolution. Um, phase one focuses on finding your customer. Phase two, exploring your idea. And phase three, execute and start up. So we've shortened it. We've really refined it. And we're honing in on these three phases. Next slide. I won't read through all of these, but I like to share them. Um, as someone who develops curriculum and works with people, it's really heartening to realize that you're actually making a difference in people's lives. People get different things out of this. For some, it was learning that they weren't the only people with imposter syndrome and finding a supportive group to help them deal with that. People learned about failure and how it's okay to fail. The only real fa failure is a failure to learn. Um, and other people learn more about the startup mindset and that kind of thing. Next slide. Here's more. Um, it was really wonderful, especially during a pandemic and for our most recent cohort. Um, this last quote said, they wish it wasn't ending. These weeks had been a joy for them and it made them sad it was over. I think we all felt that way. It was wonderful to come together in a supportive group and work on building something at such a strange time in all of our lives. Next slide. So we'll be launching our new cohort with the new sort of phased approach in fall 2021. Um, Center ICE is a key partner for us, so I'm sure they will be sharing information about when you can begin applying and engaging. We also have it on the Alaska Startups Facebook page, the Alaska Startups newsletter, and of course through the Center for Economic Development's communications. Next slide. We offer other events and services as well, everything from sprints to rapid ideation. We're involved in Startup Week. We provide free one-on-one -on -one coaching and mentoring. Um, and like I said, we're offering a customer discovery summer intensive right now with plans to do it more in the future. Next slide. And that's it. I'm looking forward to your questions. Um, and yeah, just again, Peter, thank you so much for being a great partner to us, for putting this together, and to Linda and Francis for both your and your organization's ongoing support and collaboration.
Thank you for that, Gretchen. Thank you, Francis, and thank you, thank you, Linda. It's it's always great to see how our programs connect, and even with with Centre Rice and some of the funding that we can provide through our seed funding, the university researchers. I see a few names on the attendees list, and then how those can then transition out to the, the three programs that you've mentioned. It's always it's always interesting to see, like 907 Financial that went through students of startups was in UAA, and then the um, both Carter Solutions and Elevated Oats, I see Linda, are, are in your program this year, and they've got students of startups working with from, from our program, and then Aquaga and, Remo, and Remora that you mentioned, uh, Francis, and, and there's a few others that have connected to Center Ice in the past through funding um, that, are, that have also um, gone through the uh, in previous cohorts. So it's always good to see this statewide uh, connection um, because it really is a community moving forwards. Um, and I think Linda, you pointed out, it's like finding where the right time and the right place to plug in, whether it's in one of these programs within the university, seed funding to turn a research and development ready for the market. Um, it's, it's really just finding where you can connect and there'll be a place um, and an opportunity to grow. So um, I see a couple of questions um, that have been brought up by uh, attendees. One was actually for you, Francis, on North Alaska um, from Nathan. Um, he was asking about, uh, public investment into the companies that are going through the technology development track. Is, is there a way to do that? Um, and, and if so, what might be um, something that you can uh, let us know about that process? Um, obviously, they're all individual companies themselves, um, but, but is there a process or a recommendation you have moving forwards? Sure. Yeah, I read that question a, a little bit more broadly, maybe just referring to um, kind of how the public can get involved. In terms of a direct financial investment, it's typically not the case because our companies would be a bit later stage, um, but it could be possible with angel investors. Um, in terms of just kind of how to get the public interested and involved in our mission and what we're doing, um, the best first step is to just sign up for our newsletter. That's where we push out any events or updates or things like that. You can do that at launchalaska.com. And then um, our big public facing event we do each year, um, this year will be on September 14th and that's our traction event. And so we'll be sending out a save the date um, to our email list in the next couple of weeks and posting on socials and all of that. Um, and then it's really just about getting involved with our companies. So learning who they are um, through that traction event or on our website, and then seeing if you can connect them to customers or partners or things like that. Um, you know, that's what our program is all about, just connecting those companies. Um, so that's really the best way that I can ask for the help for help from the general community um, is just through that kind of connection piece. And if you are someone who's a subject matter expert in food, water, energy and transportation or you're an asset owner, um, please reach out and we would love to get you involved as a panelist um, for our program um, or as a part of our review committee that reviews our applications. Great. Thanks. I would say, I would say too that for, um, you know, for people who are interested in investing into you know, companies that are Alaska-based companies, there there is kind of a way to do that through the Alaska Angel Conference. And so if you're not an accredited investor, um, every year in the beginning of the year, a bunch of people get together. And so it's kind of an educational event for um, startup founders and for investors. And, you know, we go through the whole process of due diligence. Um, we have workshops, both again, for founders and investors. So it's, it's a really cool group of people that, Many of them are seasoned investors. Some of us were rookies the first time around this year, but nonetheless, it allows you to invest your money into the you know, Alaskan companies. Um, check it out on alaskaangelconference.com, I think. Yeah, there thanks. is one other way to invest. Oh, there's many ways to invest, but another one you might be interested in is Alaska's interstate crowdfunding, which is through the state of Alaska. I'm not gonna go into it now because we're, we're nearing the top of the hour, but I'm going to put a link in case you'd like to learn more in the chat. Great, thanks for everybody for that response. And I was going to bring up the Alaska Angel Conference because this year's winner is actually WebRes that's in the uh, program and, and uh, it'll be run out of Anchorage this year. And I saw that uh, Mel not only posted the, the link and we just ran the event through Fairbanks with Mark Billingsley, who was part of OIPC and Center Ice was the lead for it this year. So it's in its four, it'll be in its fourth year next year. And uh, you can see the different companies that are receiving investments. Um, and also there's the, the, the side discussions that go on during an event like that, where it may, you may be connected to quite a few different groups and different investors, in addition to the um, top ones that get through to the final 
final day. Uh, a question from um, Amy Rodriguez um, uh, to you, Linda, is um, maybe you did mention it. When's the next opportunity uh, you mentioned right now? There's the five going through. Uh, how often do you run your uh, cohort type of approach with GBeta Anchorage? Yeah, so we do it twice a year. So I would suspect we don't have a date um, specifically picked out yet, but probably you know, sometimes in September, just so we can get done um, before the holidays, because, you know, we got to attract the right mentors, the right investors, etc. So um, if you go to or just Google G beta Anchorage, you can go ahead and apply. We do accept an unrolling basis. And then, um, yeah, you know, we'll touch base or just schedule an office hour with me if you have specific questions about, you know, what makes for a great company um, or like a specific company for for G beta. Great, thanks. Um, thanks for that, Linda. So um, I guess uh, I don't see any any questions. Um, and Solomon did point out if anybody wants to have a question or, or be able to um, chat, then just raise their hand. But um, as as the lead of um, host for the event, I've got a chance to ask a few of my own questions to you all. Um, so as as myself and both uh, Gretchen are based at the University uh, Alaska Anchorage, both Gretchen and Fe University of Alaska Fairbanks, part of the University of Alaska system, um, how do you connect with students within Gretchen, you mentioned about the students that go through the UA, um, the Upstart Alpha Accelerator in terms of, and then maybe to all of you, it's sort of how do you interact with uh, students on a sort of throughout the university year and over the summer? Um, do you look for like interns with the different companies? Um, how, how do you work with the Alaskan students to get them that experience and, and sort of minimize that gap that Gretchen pointed out of the entrepreneurial um, side of the UA students? Is there a way that you interact with the students? Are you looking for uh, student involvement in some of your programs? Maybe that's a, and I know Gretchen, you highlighted all the work that you do as because you're at the University of Lacta Anchorage, so you have a very close connection to students. But maybe that's a question, I guess, to Francis and Linda in, in how you might interact with uh, university students. Sure, I, I can kick this one off. Um, so I would say our involvement specifically with the University of Alaska is really through Gretchen in that program and kind of filtered, filtered through that program. Um, one other way we're involved in students is just through our summer interns. Um, I think a couple of them are on, on the line right now um, and they're not students at University of Alaska, but they're both from Alaska this summer. And so that's one way to kind of stay involved with um, just you know the youth in our state and keep up to date on those issues and make sure that we're aware of what's going on. So for us at G Beta, it's interesting because there's some G Beta locations that are specifically attached to universities, and they will only, you know, start service companies, start companies that are coming out of those universities, which is interesting. Um, and so I would love to kind of like draw the universities to that. And then, you know, and, and it's not that necessarily we'll only work with universities companies, of course, that's not the case. But I would love to like tease out those founders that have ideas, people that have ideas, and to really get them into the pipeline, whether it's, you know, the right place for them is Upstart Alpha or the right place for them is um, G Beta, you know, maybe even um, Lunch Alaska, but it's like last year, I, I read this, there was this crazy thing on Planet Money that there were more startups that were started in Q3 of the whole pandemic of 2020. And they kind of called this the, the creative destruction because, you know, as the pandemic started, of course, things sort of fell off, but then it started to rise and it started to rise. And so, a lot of people is there looking like, what? well, what should I do now? You know, I've lost my job or I have to pivot. They're really um, putting, uh, turning all those gears and um, really moving on their ideas. So I would really encourage all the students, you know, to look into that because we do have a pipeline for you to succeed here in Alaska between all the programs that we've just talked about. Um, you know, if you're interested in working with, with GBeta, definitely re reach out to me and I'll, I'll figure out a way to do that. Yeah, if I could jump in real fast. Linda, weren't you a student entrepreneur at one time? I participated in like this, um, like a startup weekend, but it was specifically for students. It was called Three Day Startup. It, this um, UT Austin grad student like brought it to UA and I participated in that. And that was honestly like my launch pad towards being a founder, which is what I did before that. So yeah, I mean, this, this stuff is like a gold mine. Like I, I highly, highly encourage it. I would say um, not to just like spotlight Linda too much, but you're really kind of living the journey that we're looking for where you've launched three companies um, successfully, uh, exited a couple of them, 
and now you're an ecosystem builder and working with founders yourself. And so it's, a, I think, a real success story and a testament to what early stage entrepreneurial programming can do for people. Thank you, Gretchen. <laughs> It's always it's always good to highlight um, and, and and demonstrate where everybody's come from the backgrounds that we have and, and the skills that we all bring to the table and i think for me um working at the university as a faculty member students often can be the ones that can work with their faculty members and bring some of those research projects that the faculty are working on um, out of the university collaborating with their faculty members um, to then either spin up a, a company and move into one of the programs or go after funding opportunities and thinking of like Aquaga is one example that is going through Launch Alaska that that was um, developed through the University of Alaska Fairbanks and is connected to University of Washington is one example and there's others as as well so I, I I'm, I'm grateful Linda what you said about how to connect with some of those university founders and how to get those developed technologies into the different programmings whether it's in the the three of you today um, connecting into the, the seed funds that we have um, at, at Center Ice to help them move that R&D into a commercial opportunity to then progress into a, 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 full, um, a business, a startup business that can connect into some of the others. And it's really plugging in in the right place at the right time. And the, the, the growth of opportunities to, to connect in has really accelerated, I think, in the last few years, and um, which I think is great. For, for the state and great for these new our new entrepreneurs coming through. So we are coming to the top of the hour. Um, we're going to do a, a sort of soft closure to the the event. So if any more questions uh, want to get brought up, or if and I know the panelists, if you have to if you have other commitments, that's fine. But um, we always like to sort of not just uh, have a very uh, dis discreet break, but but give us all a chance. If any of the others panelists have questions for the other panelists. Um, that's also um, fine and, and, and great as well. Um, but I want to. Uh, oh, we've got another question over from Nathan. Uh, what kind of state policies have organizations found helpful in supporting entrepreneurship? What future policies might be helpful? Is that a question that anybody's got a background in to, to, that they could bring up? I can actually dive in there. I don't have an answer for you right now, but. Um... Linda and I connected this summer along with other people and sort of started loosely forming a working group that we're calling the Startup Alliance. And one of the things we're doing is looking at state policies, um, specifically for me at least through the Right to Start movement, which was founded by Victor Huang. There's a website called Right to Start and it focuses on policies for startups. I would recommend taking a look at that. And I don't have anything to share, but we're investigating state of Alaska policies, municipal policies, that kind of thing to see um, what they mean for startups in Alaska and um, potentially working to change them if they need to be changed. Yeah, and I'll pipe in as well. I think that, you know, for us to change policies like our political um, individuals need to really understand what a what a startup is. And, you know, like when I say I work for a startup accelerator, some people ask me if this is a physics thing. And I say, well, you're thinking of a particle accelerator. That is not quite what I do. Um, and so, you know, like when I was looking at the recent mayoral election and all the candidates, I looked for the Q&A and I was looking for the word like startup or entrepreneurship. And there was only one person that like mentioned it twice, right? And so we really need to expand their view and to get them to understand that startups in itself, and I, I've said this, this before to a couple of you, is an industry of its own. Like the fact that we do have different verticals, but the fact that startup as a whole thing, it's a big entity, it's an ecosystem. There's inputs, there's stuff that happens in the middle, there's outputs, and there's great things that happen as an aftermath of that. And so we need to nurture this industry. And just like oil and gas has an alliance, we should have one as well. And this is where we can start to like kind of amass that and start to change policy, in my view. Yeah, I'll, I'll just add to that quickly. So for Launch Alaska, we have been getting more involved in policy um, within the last year or so. And I would say for us, it's um, so far, it's mostly on energy or related to energy policy. And so we work closely with the Renewable Energy Alaska Project and support everything that they're pushing for. And there are quite a few things that they're working on now that could really help us um, move these energy projects forward. Um, such as creating a renewable portfolio standard and things like that. So we are getting more involved in policy as we see that it's it's definitely helpful to moving our projects forward. Great, thanks. Thanks all. Um, it's 
always great when we can all we all have a, a, a information that can answer these questions because it really helps those that are brought up. So thanks for the question, Nathan. Uh, we have a question from John Kamler. Uh, so his question is: um, Paying customers are obviously the best for vetting, but for new technologies, what other kinds of third-party vetting carries significant weight? And would you listen to tech validation? Yeah, I, I can answer that one. Um, so yeah, that's kind of, that's the challenge is getting over that hump of getting your first customer. So ideally, you know, we have a paying customer that's interested in the tech, but they want to know about it, about its work before. So it's kind of a catch 22. Um, but what we typically do is, um, you know, there is an opportunity for pilot projects or really lab verified testing. And so Alaska Center for Energy and Power plays a role in that um, up at UAF. So some of our teams can go there and test their product in a lab if they haven't done that already. And that provides um, just a lot of assurance to companies um, or to potential customers saying that, okay, we know this at least works in a lab setting and this is third party verified, even if you may not have um, paying customers yet. Great, thanks for that. Gretchen or Linda, anything to add? If um, if not, we'll, I've got a couple more questions from my side and uh, uh, we'll move on. Oh, question from, from one of the students to startups. Um, what kind of careers role should early professionals pursue um, either that could be in, in a large scale organized businesses or startups to prepare to, fund, to found a startup in the future? What, what would you recommend um, would be ways to move forward to, for an early career professional? I have um, a couple thoughts on that. There's sort of, well, a couple things. Um, there's an interesting trend when we were reviewing startup data and the most common age for people to start their own startup, I believe is around 45. Um, and this often has to do with people who've worked in an industry or field for almost their entire career and they've become really expert. They've noticed gaps and they want to leverage their experience into filling those gaps and sort of solving problems that aren't being solved. And so that's actually a really common thing. So in that, looking at it from that perspective, I would say, stay curious, work in something you care about that matters to you and look for opportunities to fill. The other thing you can do is just start working for startups, um, play with ideas, very seldom are people's first idea, the idea that carries them forward, but get prepared to try a lot of things and to fail often and learn every time you fail and then continue on in that way. So coming at it from different directions, but. It looks like Linda or Francis might have something to add. Yeah, I, I totally plus one to that. Um, and I think as I've seen, you know, just evaluated so many startups, you really do see those kind of two sides of it. So the really deep technical expertise side. And then the other angle you can come at it from is um, really the just general business, like doing an MBA or learning about marketing, communications and sales, um, you know, so much of a successful startup is really about translating that message and sharing it and the, the marketing and sales and communication side. So I've seen a lot of successful pairings where someone who just kind of has that general business expertise joins up with someone who has the deep technical side and creates a successful startup that way. And I, I will add that like, um, and you know, Tim Ferriss talks about this. If you can figure out like what your main skill is and then if you can intersect it with another skill that makes it a unique and rare um, combination for you and for your sphere, you know, I'll give us a, like a Carta, right? Carta solution is an example. So for Jay, he's worked for oil and gas companies. He's, um, seen how they integrate software, what the software needs are, et cetera. But he also, um, has, has worked for as a consultant with, you know, for Amazon and other big companies in like 3d stuff and, uh, virtualization and virtual environments and augmented reality and those kinds of things. So he has this unique intersection of skills that make him really positioned well to run this company and to understand. And when you're looking at investors, that's what they're looking for. What is it that makes you uniquely positioned to run this company? And to me, it's like really the intersection of two specific skills is another way to think about this. Yeah, great, great answers. Um, Gretchen, always interested when I hear that number of the average age for a startup company, and I'm thinking, wow, I'm the average age for starting a company. Um, so I won't tell you what the age is, but you can work it out. Um, so thanks all uh, for, for presenting. Uh, we're going to 
go through and thanks Oscar for that question that was a really interesting one to sort of talk about the career roles uh, so we're going to wrap it up now with a few just final slides to to so um, remind you who brought to, brought the event together and, and what are ways to continue connecting to, to us at Center Ice. So um, I'm Peter Webley. Um, I'm the faculty member at UAF and, and uh, part of this Center Ice programming team. Solomon Hillbloom um, has been helping me today on the technology side of the event, but is also part of our um, Ice Jam preparation team. And then today we also had students of startups program, which is our summer uh, um, experiential learning program, where we have students working directly with startups, but also learning about the startup ecosystem across the state of Alaska. And that was the impetus for today's event to give them the chance to be um, able to hear from the three uh, represented startup uh, programmings that we had that we heard about. Um, also within Center Ice, we um, have a um, online community. Gretchen mentioned a couple of programs like Alaska Startups Facebook page, and there's a few others on, on Facebook, on LinkedIn of ways to connect and all the three programs that you had um, presenting today have their own newsletters to highlight um, what they're, what's coming up, the different events they've got, Linda mentioning her event in, in later in July and, and, and the sort of timings of when the next events that are coming forwards. So always connecting into the community and working with the relevant groups. Uh, so we have uh, Center Ice itself has its own uh, Facebook page to, to promote the events going on within our innovation hub. Um, also, we cross connect and cross promote other events going on. So really, it's to allow you to be prepared and ready to know when the event's coming and not sort of find out about it a few hours before and therefore you're able to, to attend. Uh, we have a Slack community that we have developed uh, over the last 18 months to two years that is an online platform for discussions. Um, whether it's startup resources, whether it's um, new ideas. Um, we have our um, students that have gone through our previous uh, students of startups on there and a few others that I see on the uh, attendees list that are part of this. And it's just a space to, to, to chat as a community. Um, and it's one other way to connect um, in addition to the ones uh, that you've had uh, the, the startup, the, the presenters today have, have highlighted. So um, just a, a place for us to share new events, a, so, a place to socially discuss um, about different projects and, and just a, 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 an open space to be able to, to um, chat in our own time and about our own programs. So I just want to say thank you to everybody for today. Um, we're, we're, that's a wrap, as they say, on, in the movie um, industry. Um, I, I noted a, a, a chat that came in from, um, from one of the uh, attendees of just so much, didn't realize there was so much information and resources out there for startups. So I'm really glad that the event today really highlighted that for her and, and, and I'm hoping that other attendees have, have found that out. So uh, I wanna thank our presenters, Francis Ball, Launch Alaska, Linda Jaynes, um, G. Bader Anchorage, and Gretchen Fowski from the uh, UAA's um, Startup Upstart Accelerator um, and wish you all a wonderful uh, rest of your week and uh, a 4th of July weekend as that's coming up. So uh, hopefully everybody can get out, enjoy the good weather um, and uh, building our startup community across the state. So. Thank you to our attendees. Thank you to our panelists and presenters today. And I wish you all a great upcoming weekend.